In our next catch up with the NK patrons, we chat to Andy Moss. Andy was a member of the company, of course, for a very long time. He moved with us when he was a a young man from Denton uh, when we came over to Romilly to the Forum Theatre. That's when he became a key member of our theatre and education team. So one of the actors going out to perform into schools and youth centres, etc. He then became full time. He made his television debut in Cutting It alongside Amanda Holden before joining the cast of Hollyoaks where he spent around about nine years playing the character of Rhys Ashworth. In 2015 he was announced as the lead man in the UK tour of Ghost the Musical and more recently he's been seen in the West End with Knights of the Rose. So we had a nice catch up with Andy first of all asking him how he's doing. I'm very well, very well, surviving. Yeah, so where, where are you at the moment? So I am in Hartford, which is just a bit outside London, Yeah. Um, with my partner, uh, my cousin, and our new puppy. Oh, you got a new puppy? <laughs> we did. We got it the day before lockdown when we found out that it was going to be like serious. We really? Like, <laughs> if we're ever going to get a dog when we're both at home, now's the time. And have you been able to keep in touch with family? Well, my brother's still in Manchester, yeah. um, so I've been... I've, We've been FaceTiming and stuff, and my niece is like two now, so it's quite sad that I'm missing out on her, you know, the early years of her growing up. But we FaceTime as much as we can. And then my mum and dad are in Spain, um, and they've not been allowed out for three months. Yeah, it's been pretty sad just seeing them on a on an iPad for the last three months. But uh, um, hopefully, it's starting to ease there. So yeah, been keeping in touch with everyone, and obviously family and friends and stuff on Zoom. I'd never even heard of Zoom before all this started. Same here. Never even knew what it was for, and then um, yeah, now we're doing all, all sorts on it. I'm doing a, a yoga class um, on. Friday. Do you mean you're taking part in it? You're not running a yoga class? No, I'm teaching one. I'm, wow. I'm teaching a yoga class. Yeah, I do, I do a bit of teaching now as well. Is it strange using technology for work? For acting stuff, um, obviously we tape a lot for auditions yeah. and sometimes the director won't be in the country or whatever and you do a Skype meeting over, you know, over. so this has been going on for the last couple of years anyway. Right. Um, and the crazy thing is, you know, theatres is obviously taken a, a massive hit. Were you involved in anything? Or have you kind of spoke to anyone who was involved in literally mid-show when all this happened? Or yeah, all, like a lot of my friends were were in the West End. Some of the shows have just had just opened. Yeah. Some of them were in production. Some of the tours had been fully rehearsed and were ready to go. Yeah. Um, and it literally just stopped everything. It's, it's a really worrying time, and some a lot of my friends just work in the theatre mm. to just go from working six days a week to, to nothing is a big shock for for everyone. Is it as hard work as everybody would imagine doing a doing a, a tour of a show? And I mean, how many performances a week would you normally do? A couple of matinees and yeah, so it's usually like. Eight, eight shows a week and Gosh. before I did it I was I, obviously I was on Hollyoaks for eight eight years nine yeah, years it's a long time and, the, it? and the time for that though the, the actual hours that you do were yeah. like 13 14 hour days right. so I always used to think oh if I get a theatre job I only have to work three hours at the night <laughs> um, but it is not like that at all it was it's such I had such a respect for musical theatre once again once I'd done the yeah. big ghost tour because it you literally have to drain every ounce of energy and project everything that you've got for that two hours that that i'm that you're on the stage and going going around the country and doing that in a different venue every week as well is another challenge and then all the things that come along with that and so I found, and then I was doing interviews in the mornings. So I'd go and do an inter, the local radio interviews yeah. in the mornings. Much harder work than I expected. Much, much more. But you get the instant gratification. Everyone loves it. You're on a little family on tour. So oh. you know the good things with any acting job always weighs out out the bad things. But um, yeah, I don't quite remember what the question was. But. <laughs> <laughs> I think you know, it was about appreciating the hard work of mm. being a performer and being a you know particularly a touring 
cast member and it's the discipline like because if you're if you're the lead in one of them big shows yeah. like once the show's over you can't go and party with the rest of the cast because you've got to go and save your voice and get ready for tomorrow and you know do do the whole thing over again so that was a bit of a shock for me do as you feel well. that's a big challenge for people coming into theatre it was that easy for you well to be honest i thought i'd be able to do both yeah because <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've had a lot of experience like that's you know 10 years 12 years in, in nk and we were always doing stuff yeah and you know go, going out on the side and then when i was joe like, we'd, we'd go out and we'd learn your lines when you got there in the morning and you know but when you have to sing six or seven songs if you've gone out and it's not even about drinking or, no. or think it's about talking over loud music and yeah. things like that that strain your voice and I remember something, and I, and I thought to myself when I was thinking about talking to you, I thought, I bet Andy's done, I don't know, how many hundreds, maybe even a thousand performances live that you've done. And you were on stage and suddenly got a nosebleed. I, I can't even remember what it was now, was it? Were you playing half a sixpence? It, it, was, it was half a sixpence at Tameside Hippodrome, and it was the first time I'd been given the chance to do a lead part. And you came out with a line, well, you do seem to have given me a nosebleed. Yeah, you And all the audience, me, yeah. all the audience, like, started clapping and everything. I thought, what a great way of just kind of, everyone knew you had this nosebleed and and uh, what a great way of just acknowledging it. And it's just like, what a bizarre thing to have happened to you on, on a stage. And I thought, I bet that's never happened to him since. I know, that, that, was, um, that, was, that was crazy. And, you know, things like that, that, that do happen and things that are out of your control... If you can kind of cover it with something like that, then the audience is always on your side, kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and uh, you know that that would have that have built my confidence. Because I just I always think back to that. You know, if, if I can get through a nosebleed and sing a song, <laughs> um, I can probably pretty much do anything. Yeah. Um, I don't, with, with some of the big stuff though, what what I would always get nervous about because obviously there's big orchestra in the pit and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. And so if you miss a beat or a bar, it doesn't just affect you, it affects like so much of the production and a lot of it is on track and timings now. Mm. It's all technical as well, so you literally have to hit those marks, you have to sing the same thing. And it it was you know, just just learning that that as well was was crazy, and then I think it was Manchester actually with Ghost. Yeah. Um, I'd built myself up and I was so excited and I wanted it to be perfect and everyone was coming to see it that I know from, from you know years gone by. Yeah. And so I was and I I'd, I'd put that much pressure on myself. By the end of the, I think it was the Friday and Saturday, my voice had completely gone. Gosh. And I had to, I still did the show because it yeah. was in Manchester and I wanted to do it. Right. And um, my voice kept cracking and everything. It was it was awful. It was awful. <laughs> like, looking back now, I probably shouldn't have done the show. But um, again, the audience were with you, yeah. giving it 100%. And, you know, occasionally your voice will crack or whatever. Um, so, yeah, the, nothing as bad as a nosebleed, but little things <laughs> like that have, have definitely come up along the way. Oh, I'll tell you one was Go on. when I was... Uh, so, I, it was Ghost again, actually, and I was supposed to be the ghost and yeah. nobody else could see me. Yeah. Um, bearing in mind, this is, like, somewhere big. Like, I think it might have even been in London. Right. Uh, one of the theatres in London. And um, the set came in too early. Yeah. Because it was <sighs> coming down quite quick. Wow. And obviously, no one was supposed to see me, and I literally just had to say, get out of the way and drag everyone by the way. So, a, a few things like that have def definitely crop up along the way. Do you but think uh, that's again, that's the excitement and the, the thrill of live performing. Is that the big difference between TV and stage? Is that, you know, you only get one chance on the stage for it to go well? Yeah, you want to do your best every, every time you're there. So. You know, you, you might try something out the night before that didn't work as well and you might, you know, change it up again and you kind of can get a feel for it and you, you know what works and then by the end you've just got this really solid performance. Whilst you're touring, are there still bits of, that a director will go, actually, that, that you know, I want to tighten that up a bit or... Yeah, yeah so we, we have like... Um, an assistant director who's on the tour as well yeah um so sometimes if you get to a venue um we have to cut a bit of the scene because it won't fit in or something so you have to kind of re-block 
right. um, a scene or something, or, or the, the view might be restricted from a certain area of the theatre, so you have to move everything downstage a bit, or the rake of the stage is, like, really deep. So, you, so yeah, um, with, with a big established show that they've done before, usually it's a pretty solid machine and they know what they want to do. Yeah. Um, but, like, the, the last big thing I did was um, Knights of the Rose in, in the West End. Um, yeah. Because it, it was a brand new show. I think even two months into the run, mm. we were still coming in to, to change bits and tighten bits up and put new songs in and take songs out. Um, and that was really interesting, being on a, a big show like that and then adapting it as we went. Um, it, was, it was exciting. So yeah. is that the first time you've done a major new musical, like you said there, taking part in almost the creative side as well, you know, creating it as, yeah. a, as a piece and yeah, trying to perfect de- it? Definitely, that's that, and I found that to be to be really, really rewarding because obviously you get an input into it. Where it's yeah, if it's an established show, they're like, no, you go here, you stand there, you sing that, you say that, you yeah. blink your eyes here, <laughs> and it's it's literally set like that. But when you you have a process like this, where you could be, you can be a bit freer, and you can go, oh, do you think that worked? And and have kind of have a dialogue with the director and the musical director and is make that, the part your own. Is that welcome, Andy, when you come with an idea? If it's a show that's established and you, you come up with an idea, it's not as well received because right. you have, like, everything's timed, everything's money, so it's, like, 19 days to do this, this, yeah. this, and this, so yeah. you need to do this, 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 and this. Right. And that's it. That's the end of the conversation. Whereas with this, the director wants input and... You know, we do previews for that reason that people can give their opinion and then Mm -hmm. we'll come back and... And so it's it's just a much more creative experience and a much more enjoyable experience than just being told what to do and where to go. Is there an area now that you you want to experience that you've not done before? My very first job, or my first big job, was cutting it. It was a six-part series. You know the beginning, you know the end, you know what happens, whereas... In a soap or or, uh, just a continuing drama, everything's constantly changing. Mm -hmm. You don't know what happens in the end. You don't know what the ideas the writers have got. So what what I'd love to do is a a, a six-part series where I know the beginning, the middle, and the end, and I can work out how the character will will react through the whole thing and I've still not had the opportunity to do that yet. And so like with Hollyoaks your character was a developing character and it was reactive to the storylines almost whereas exactly. you know how do you put yourself in the frame for for that sort for of me, work? For me it's just what, why, I, why I really still want to do this and I will do it eventually it's just you know when I will and do it and where I'll do it but I, what you can do then as an actor is you can put other things in like more interesting things look and yeah. thoughts and yeah. you know stuff that you you, you wouldn't know to do because you don't don't know what the end of the story is in a continuing drama. Mm. So for me, it'd be a much more create again a more creative process where you're you are a part of the the creation of it rather than again just being told what where to stand and what to say. If you are a young uh, performer just starting out. Is it a case of get as much experience as you can? Would that still be the, the advice that you give to young people? Yeah, do what do whatever you can. Go, you know, like go to your local drama groups. Go to be an be an extra in things. Like just get as much as much experience as you can. Um, and then with with acting, especially these days, you know, if you've done all your homework. Done, got as much experience as you can. There's a certain amount of luck as well involved. You you were obviously part of our theatre and education team a lot as well, um, going out and doing uh, things for the police and stuff. Is that a, a place that you can experiment almost and develop your skills and, and see for yourself what works and what doesn't work? I think it's dealing with, you know sensitive subjects like we were doing with the police and that was such a quick turnaround as well wasn't it one group in one group out one group in one group out yeah and again it was just learning on the job like and every group would be different you know some kids would be rowdy yeah. some teachers didn't want you to say certain things like so, so again it was always learning and adapting and you know doing it on the job um but what i got out of that was i then my first professional job was a, a big tie tour where yeah. i went 
around the whole country for like a year doing like a sexual health play. Gosh. Um, so having the experience of doing that and then, you know, earning my first kind of wage yeah. uh, from it was, it, it was, you know, matched together. It was from doing that that I was able to just go straight on and do something like that. And then from that, that's then I got my acting experience from when you turn up to a venue, hmm. you don't know what it's going to be like. You have to change everything again, uh, re-block it, maybe cut some lines. And so, again, it's just learning, learning, learning. And um, getting as much experience as you can, yeah. Oh. Well, Andy, it's been lovely talking to you. So uh, do stay safe and uh, enjoy the time with your puppy. <laughs> I will do. I will do. Rocco is called. Give Rock- a shout out. Rocco. <laughs> Rocco, amazing. <laughs> like Rocco's modern life. <laughs> All right, okay. <laughs> Well, you look after yourself, great, Andy. Always great to speak to you, Darren, and um, always have as much support to NK because um, I, I started there and I learned a lot. Andy, it's very kind to hear you say that, and um, hopefully when this lockdown's over, you can come and see us. Yeah, for sure. All right, matey, take care of yourself. Cheers, bud.